Good day everyone, before I start my presentation, I would like to present to you all an image and I would like you all to think on what emotions does this image invoke within you or what emotion does this image give off. And don't worry, there are neither right nor wrong answers. So, assuming that you all have formulated answers within all of you, it seems that there is an underlying emotion that connects the varying emotions that you all have just said or you all have just thought within your minds. It seems that all of your answers stem from your one single emotion and that emotion just happens to be the overarching theme for my presentation today which is specifically don't be angry or anger in general. So what is anger? So before we indulge in the reason why we why must we not be angry, let us not first scrutinize the overarching theme, the underlying emotion that all of your answers had or all you have formulated within your minds, which is anger. Anger may be defined differently by different persons depending on their emotional and psychological backgrounds. Some might say anger is like an internal fire that is burning within you and gradually consumes you within yourself. Some might also compare anger and a person possessing to a sealed kettle with boiling water within it, waiting for its vessel to fail and explode. That is what's interesting with defining these emotions, that it is subjective. It depends on the person defining it, thus varying interpretations arise. But for the sake of the presentation, now let's stick to the dictionary definition of anger, which is Anger, also known as wrath or rage, as per, dif as per the definition from the dictionary, is an intense emotional state involving strong, uncomfortable, and non-cooperative response to a perceived provocation, hurt, or threat. I would like for I would like for you all to pay attention to the bolded words. So, an intense emotional state. Inferring from this phrase, you can get that this emotion is different from the common emotions that we feel day by day, as it is intense according to the dictionary definition uncomfortable and non-cooperative response these are negative words entailing that the emotion relates to a person being uncomfortable and does not want co to cooperate to an external stimuli provocation hurt or threat such words are extremely negative thus hinting the idea that a person only develops this specific emotion when they are exposed to an extremely taboo situation a situation that might affect them or what he loves. One can also suffice from the definition above that this emotion arises from as a defensive response. So, from the previous analysis, we can finally infer that anger is an extremely negative emotion that arises when a person is exposed to an extremely negative situation that might pose a threat to the person's safety. One can also assume that it is a complex defensive response. However, like all other emotions, it is neither good or bad. I would like you all to emphasize this point again and again since this emotion has always had a negative connotation and it would be better if we view emotions not like a black and white comparison but like a black, gray and white comparison. And like any other emotion too, it conveys a message and it has a purpose, telling a person that a situation is upsetting, unjust, or threatening. That's why it is very important that we have the correct mindset towards anger and we express our anger in a carefully thought out manner, since anger, Since a skewed perception on anger is really dangerous because if once hardware reaction or condition response to anger is to explode uncontrollably, such message will never have a chance to be conveyed, therefore failing the main reason for expressing such emotion in the first place. Having a skewed perception on anger will cost one his relationships with other people and their perception on him his rational judgment diminish and much more importantly, his path to success compromise. And unbeknownst to everyone, 
there are three types of anger and each depend on how the emotion is expressed. Knowing these three types of anger is important in processing on how should we address such type of anger. Moving on, so the first type of anger is passive anger. As hinted by its name, this type of anger is expressed by passive means. This type of anger expression is commonly shown by people that do not have the moral confidence and strength to express their anger in a more outwards and physical manner. Because of this deficit, a person that shows this kind of anger internalizes the expression within themselves when he or she avoids dealing with the situation that contributed to the feelings of anger. This feeling of anger can then be expressed by getting even holding a grudge or being mean at some time in the future towards a person. And since the decision to not express the anger in an outward manner is an active one, meaning the person deciding is aware of the decision, we can therefore conclude that rationality is still in control of this person and is maintaining a semi-tight grasp on the person's mind. An example for this type of anger is this passion. So, this passion is a type of passive anger that is correlated with someone giving off the following actions or habits, which are the following. First, giving someone the cold shoulder or fake smile. I think everyone knows what this action means. So, to give someone the cold shoulder means to intentionally ignore someone or treat someone in an unfriendly way. Giving someone a fake smile is an example of treating someone in, a, in an unfriendly way. Second, to sit on a fence. So this is an idiomatic expression that denotes that you intentionally avoid supporting a particular side in a discussion or argument, or to not commit, to put in a simple manner, as means to express your frustration or anger to someone in a passive way. Third. As much as it seems to be out of place from the list of examples above, oversleeping is an example of passive anger expression. It may be because that a person doesn't have the enough energy to express their anger in any other passive means that they subconsciously express it through oversleeping. So, moving on again, the next type of anger expression is uh, let's work it through here aggressive anger. Aggressive anger. I think one can immediately pick up how this anger expression is done. So, to explain it furthermore, aggressive anger is a type of anger expressed in physical and noticeable means. And this is a type of anger that is expected to be expressed by people that have been blinded by their anger and by people that do not have a common social decency and norms. Or to word it in another way, that, ha that do not have a sense for common social decency and norms. The person expressing anger through this way is primed to emotionally, physically, or psychologically hurt the person they are directing their anger at. And in this type of anger, rationality is not in control of the person anymore. The flux of emotions is in complete control of the person. One can also compare a person expressing his anger in an aggressive way to an intoxicated or drunk person that is going unhinged. One can prove that rationality is not in control of the person anymore in both of the persons because when both of the persons are in a state of clarity anymore, they wouldn't have any idea what they did in their fit of anger and would really regret it as they weren't able to control it. An example for this anger expression are the following. First, threats. So threat is this type of aggressive anger that is ex expressed by the following actions again, which is number one, the most common for the threat, frightening people by saying how one could harm them, their property or their prospects. The idea of harming people like you is not an innate characteristic of the human person, as we are hardwired to be sociable. So the circumstance wherein one can threaten someone is caused by the rationality not in control of the person anymore. Number two, the expression to fist your shape 
or to shake your fist in the other hand is to shake your closed hand in the direction of the person as a way of showing that you're angry at them. This is commonly done by a person that intends to express their aggressive anger to a person from a distance. So it's kind of weird like you do that while if you're angry if, if you're angry at the person that is far, uh, far away from you. And number three, the third part. This is commonly exhibited by drivers. This is like fist shaking but using the contrivances in their automobiles that emit an obnoxious sound for example the horn to express their aggressive anger or frustration to a person from a distance and finally the last form of anger expression is let me correct it assertive anger so this is a type of anger that is expressed through assertive means Assertive in a way that is having or showing up confident and forceful personality. It is usually the best form of anger expression as the anger is expressed directly in a non threatening way to the person involved. A statement such as, I feel angry when you. the following, blah blah blah, is an example of assertive anger expression. Because since a person can himself decide on how he would express his anger directly to the person, that entails that that entails that the expression sounds remain sounds and remains blunt, but still remains diplomatic. This connotes that the rationality is still of full control of the person that is exhibiting this type of anger. An example of this anger expression is sternness. So sternness. Sternness defined by the dictionary is the act of being stern, which in turn denotes being hard and severe in nature or manner. It is also the act of calling out a person on their behavior with their voices raised with utter disapproval or disappointment. This is the tamest example of anger expression among the examples listed. Since this example is commonly exhibited by everyone, ranging from your parents and friends to your superiors and other professionals in the workplace, though the degree of how they express it may differ on their individual psychological states. Examples of this may range from reprimanding a subordinate. So, this is a commonplace phenomena. In a workplace when a subordinate is exhibiting undesirable work or performance. Another example is correcting a person for the bad action he or she has done. This is the general form of the first example and is prevalent in varying social situations, ranging from the household to a corporate situation. After elaborating the types of anger expression and their respective examples and repercussions, now, it is time to discuss on what are the varying effects of anger in general. So, let's move on to the next slide. <coughs> so, what are the effects of anger actually? So, since anger is a very negative social connotation, one can immediately infer that a multitude of effects arise from this negative emotion. Such effects are commonly grouped into four categories, namely... So... Again, the four effects or the four facets that anger can affect is first, the mental health, second, the person's career, third, the person's relationships, and lastly, their physical health. So, moving on, mental health first. So, chronic anger, which denotes being in the state of anger for long exper extended periods of time, consumes huge amounts of mental energy and clouds one's thinking, making it way more harder to concentrate or enjoy life. That's why it is often hard to think clearly when one is frustrated. That's why it is often recommended to have a clear mind, free from, free from anger, for doing any decision making. And such emotions can also lead to stress, depression, and much worse, it, it can also lead to other mental problems. Another category that can be affected by anger is one's career. So, 
uncontrolled outbursts of anger towards one's colleagues, supervisors, or clients worsely can lead to the respect for you to erode and diminish. Being unable to control your anger in the professional field will create a negative stigma in your career that will affect you and your credibilities in the long run, as one intends to further broaden and develop one's career. Also, exhibiting uncontrolled anger in a professional situation will make you look unprofessional. The stigma that most professionals are afraid to be associated with. Another factor that can be also affected by anger is relationships with other people. So, anger can cause lasting, a lasting scar in the people you love the most and poses an obstacle in your friendships and work relationships. Also, exhibiting explosive anger or aggressive anger makes it hard for others to trust you, speak honestly, or feel comfortable, which is also damaging to children. That's the worst part. And another last long-lasting effect of anger in one's relationship is that less people will trust you. And the last factor that will affect it, that will be affected by anger is one's physical health. So, constantly operating at high levels of stress and anger, or to simply put it, if one is angry and stressed all the time, it is, vet de it is very detrimental to one's health, even reaching up the point of leaving long-lasting health effects that can damage one's body in the long run. There are many possible complications stand out that can be the result of exhibiting chronic anger all the time. But three complications stand out from the rest, basic from how they are common with people that display the said emotion. The first major complication is high blood pressure. So, excessive expression of anger may cause your blood pressure to peak from 30 to 50 points from its usual levels. So that's already very high. Such complication is very detrimental, most especially to people that already have resting blood pressures that are excessively high. Next on, the second major complication on one's health by excessive anger would be stroke. So, stroke occurs when the blood pressure reaches nearly at levels of 200 mils of mercury. So, that's already extremely high. And such complication is characterized by the bursting of one's artery in the brain. Such bursting of the blood vessel in the brain is succeeded with a brain hemorrhage and can quickly lead to a coma and further on death. Sound serious, right? Well, you better be because from recent studies, they show that the higher the blood pressure a person has, the greater the risk for them to have a stroke anytime in their lives. So if you know that you're prone to have high blood pressure, well, you better learn on how to manage that anger as it is as it can be detrimental to you in the long run. Lastly, the third major complication on one's health caused by excessive anger would be heart diseases. So chronic anger can bring upon to oneself detrimental complications to the heart. A study published in Circulation 2000 discusses and proves that getting angry increases your chances of developing a heart disease and suffering a heart attack by a significant amount. Also, on the other hand, other extreme emotions too, including anger and sadness, can also bring stress to the heart. Besides those major complications previously explicated, there are also other possible minor complications that may develop as a result of one being too angry, such are cancer, gastrointestinal complaints, the stomach pains, diabetes, asthma, or back pain. So, after listing all the effects that are the outcomes of one being too angry and how they are detrimental to one's different facets of living, I think it's time now to talk on what to do to be able to control this internal flame within us that resides within all of ourselves. So, one might ask, ask this question. So how should we manage our anger then? 
Well, frankly speaking, managing anger may vary drastically from one person to another as it depends on their respective lifestyles and psychologies but some general key points may be established that can serve as a starting point for people to develop their anger management and further branch out to target those specifics that only they themselves know how to tackle with. So, before we dive in the question of how to manage and control our anger, let us first ask the question on what anger management really is. Surprisingly, many people think that anger management is about learning how to completely suppress your anger or suppress or to completely eliminate it in other words but in reality anger management is always a not equal to complete anger suppression it is the opposite from the previously explicated assumption also was one must also keep into their minds that never getting angry is not a healthy goal no matter how hard we suppress and dump it down, it will always come out no matter what we do. And what anger management really is and its true goal isn't to suppress feelings of anger, but rather to understand the message behind the emotion and express it in a healthy way without losing control. When you do, you'll not only feel better, you'll also be more likely to get your needs met. Be better to be better able to manage conflict in your life and further strengthen your relationships with one another now we have emphasized the true goal of anger management so let's now head on to discuss some helpful tips on how to reduce your anger remember these tips only serve as starting points and you're always allowed to further expand beyond the limitations of the tips listed here if it is necessary to the abatement of your anger and always let's head on to the first tip which is the always rest well every time overworking oneself is really detrimental getting too busy and tackling too many things can make one very irritable so if one is well rested wait let me fix this technical anomaly so if one is well rested it will be harder to make them angry next on tip 2 exercise so physical exercise can reduce stress and tension by getting your body tired with exercise one 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 won't have the pent up energy to get mad anymore and exercise also encourages the release of dopamine which is commonly referred to as the happy hormone next on Tip 3. Try to avoid alcohol consumption as much as possible. Alcohol and anger are a deadly combination. Alcohol will cloud all of one's rational judgments, thus eliminating one's self-control. Or to put it into much simpler words, alcohol can bring out the worst in you. So never try to consume alcohol, especially when you're experiencing an anger episode at the moment. So... Next on, tip 4, wait your anger out. So, if you're angry with someone, or if someone evokes feelings of anger within you, do not confront the person right away, as you will definitely regret it later what you will do when your mind is clouded with anger. Wait for a while for the anger to recede. Doing slow, deep breathing exercise in the process of waiting, just do not waste your time, and if possible, delay confronting the person as much as possible the minimum could be a day and when the time comes your anger might have passed already doing so or doing such prevents uncontrolled outbursts of emotion towards a person you have beef with tip 5 always think the long term this tip if you notice is associated with the previous tip in context with your actions now having a long-term effect on you and everyone around you it is important to think of how our actions might impact us in the future one must ask this question to oneself 
is this issue I am angry about going to affect me in this? Is going to uh, is is this issue I'm angry about going to affect me in a year's time? How about in ten years? By doing this, you are making sure that the future you will not cringe at you right now for doing the action that you did right now. Next on, tip six: get busy. People who are idle tend to become more irritable. And little things that other people are doing become a bigger deal and a source of irritation. It is always better to focus one's energies into one's own projects and one's self-development. And always remember to waste not your energy and always be busy. Next tip. Tip 7. Distract yourself. There's a saying that goes that ignorance is bliss. Though not true every time, such thing can be put into good use with anger management. If you feel that internal flame of anger rising within you, one trick is to distract yourself. Read a magazine, look at a different scene outside your window, or mentally think of a beautiful place, a place where you want to be in right now. This will shift your mind to other things. And also keep in mind to make the most o make the most out of your time. Sorry for that technical anomaly again. So tip eight. Put some allowance. Self perfectionism is a self destructive habit. As it erases the human quality within us to make errors and more importantly, learn from them. That's why you don't have to be a perfectionist. Prepare yourselves in advance for delays, traffic problems, and glitches in meetings. Please do keep in your mind and in your heart to don't be too harsh on yourself. The only mistake in committing a mistake is to not learn from them. Please do always remember that. Next on, tip 9. If the anger within you is too much to handle, then you must always find a way to release your anger safely. If one can divert their anger in other means, then it would be a healthier way for them and the people around them. Exercising and doing manual work can do the trick. There, let me rephrase that. Exercising and doing a manual work can do the trick. Talking to a supportive friend is also helpful. And if you are really furious, it is better to go to a safe place with nobody around and you can shout and release your anger there. And also, remember to always vent off wisely. So, for the next tip, tip 10. Tip 10. <laughs> Avoid unpleasant situations as much as you can. Though a common advice, there are actually some situations where being a passive Let me rephrase that again. There are actually some situations where being a pacifist pays you a lot. Know the things that usually makes you angry. Before indulging in those things or situations, depending on the situation, try to either prepare for it or just avoid it completely. To avoid any trouble that may cause your anger to spark and build up within you. And if possible, avoid it completely as such situation or things to be really sure. Tip, tip 11. If the steps before do not have any effect on abating your anger whatsoever, it is recommended for you to see a doctor as soon as possible. If you're, if you're getting angry for no particular reason at all, then you might need yourself be checked up by a doctor. There are some common medical causes of anger. The most common ones are the following. For women, menopause. Second reason, a hyperactive thyroid. And the third, an uncontrolled high blood pressure. 
you have some unresolved hostility towards somebody, then seeing a counselor too or a psychiatrist may help. And always remember to always let me go on. trust your gut, feeling, and the professionals too, as they will greatly help you in your journey towards successful anger management. And finally, for the last tip, is to pray. Pray is an action not limited to people who have religion only. One can also pray to someone they adhere without them believing a supreme being. With that said, the Christian Bible suggests and emphasizes that one must love your enemies and praise for those who persecute you. If this anecdote is to be examined pretty much closely, one can infer that such saying can be applied to anyone, though others may find it easy to do, others may find it also hard to do, but do keep in all of your minds and hearts that Forgiveness and acceptance may be the only permanent release from the anger. Everybody makes mistakes, knowingly or unknowingly. And with all that said, and the tips all laid out neatly for you all to use, it is also always important to remember and keep in mind that anger management is never easy as everyone experiences anger in a different way to one another. It is very okay if it takes you time to control your anger since such task is quite the labor to achieve. But, as with every task that we find difficult, practice will always make you perfect. The more you practice, the easier it will become and the payoff is huge. And finally, let me fix this first. Learning to... Learning to control your anger will help you. Oh no, it's lagging. It will help you build better relationships between your peers and your loved ones. Achieve the goals that you have set previously. And most importantly, controlling your anger can lead to a healthier and a more satisfying life since what better way to live life when you're enjoying every second of it right that is all from my presentation and thank you for listening good morning everyone